You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the broadcast. This is When Christians Speak Talk Radio. This is His Abounding Grace. Uh, I'm, this is Reverend Ray, and I'm filling in for Minister Van tonight. Amen. I'm filling in for her. Amen. We are broadcasting live from the Washington, D.C. area. If you ever desire to call into the show, the number is 646 we're going to continue on our topic of what we talked about on Sunday. If you didn't listen to the message on Sunday, go back and listen to it. You can listen to it by going to Blog Talk Radio, MS, uh, slash One Christian Speak, or go to our website, com. It was called Don't Waste Time. This, so this will be part two. Amen. This will be our part two. We're going to talk about a lot of things. Uh, we might do a little, little review, not much, just a little. We won't be before you long for sure. We definitely want to talk to you about some things that God has laid on my heart. Amen. So what we're going to do real quick is that we're going to go ahead and play a couple of announcements. Amen. Uh, Man, we'll be back in a minute. We invite you to join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for His Abounding Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for declaring the finished work. Rev. Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. The first Mondays of every month, join Apostle Shirley Jones for Lifeline at 7 p.m. And on every third Monday of the month, join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration at 7 p.m. Every fourth Saturday of the month, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson. Join Rev. Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line at our new time on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580 and the access code is 732 732- Four nine nine. Amen. Amen. Welcome back to the broadcast. Amen. His abounding grace. Amen. Um, the host today, Reverend Ray. Uh, like I said, I'm filling in for uh, Minister Van. Amen. There's one more announcement. I got to make sure I, I let you guys know what's going on. On this Saturday, January the 14th, we have the premiere of Bold and Beautiful. Amen. Uh, the Bold and Beautiful is the Bold and Beautiful is a talk show designed to bring the word of God to youth and young adults around the world and embolden them to live out loud for Jesus. Uh, their their top their theme is Ignite the Fire and Fan the Flames. They're the different hosts. We have three hosts, Reverend Curtis Austin, Reverend Novena Reed, and Sister Jordana Cunningham, amen, will be the host for the Bold and Beautiful at 10 a.m. this Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, uh, January the 14th. So we're expected, expecting a great and wonderful time of broadcast with them, and they got all kinds of stuff planned uh, for the youth and for you, amen. <laughs> amen. They will uh, probably be with me um, briefly on Friday for Friday Night Joy to talk a little bit about um, the premiere, and I'm excited about what God is doing in 
in the midst of his people. I'm excited what God is doing with When Christmas Speak Talk Radio. Amen. So we're excited about that. Amen. We'd want to go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and, and say a prayer. Father God, we just want to thank you for today. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for all that you're doing in our life. Thank you for this broadcast, Sister Diamond and Grace with Minister Van. God, we pray that you continue to increase the broadcast, God, increase the listenership, God. We pray, God, that you would also, God, more so than any of the increase, God, that you would be able to speak to the people, Lord Jesus, that healing and deliverance may take place, that whatever the people need, they might receive, God. We continue to pray, Lord Jesus, for your people, for those that are called by your name. We pray for those that don't even know you yet, Jesus Christ, that they will believe, that they will see God, that they will understand and they will receive you, Lord Jesus. So, God, we give this day to you. We give this broadcast to you. We say, have your way, Lord Jesus. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. So, again, we want to uh, continue on where we left off last week. Uh, well, like Sunday, rather, Amen. And we were talking about don't waste time, and we started off coming uh, from the, the the chapter Ecclesiastics, chapter three, verses one, Amen, and so forth, Amen. And we and we, we broke it down. We de- we did a little bit into it and begin to ask some questions and everything, and uh, we get to try to get an understanding of what God is in. And basically, the gist of what we talked about on Sunday is God is speaking to his people, is that he wants us to go forth now. You know, we some of us have circled the mountain way too long to go forth and do those things that he's called us to do. I mentioned there may be somebody out there that's written a book, that got a book in them, that has a story to tell, that has a movie to make. And go out and do those things, you know. And the reason that we need to go out and do these things is because time is running out. There was a song that we had talked about earlier. There was a song was time is on your side. Truth is, time is not on our side. Time is winding down, you know, and everything. And we never know the day or the hour when we may take that last breath, or better yet, we know the day and the hour when Jesus Christ may come. So it's time to be about our Father's business. And this is basically what uh, this series is going to be about. Amen. I just so happen to have the tonight and everything decided to do it tonight rather than put in the tape uh, um, for Minister Vanessa. So we're going to do this this uh, today, and then we'll probably, hopefully, and prayerfully, prayerfully take it up again on Sunday. And we continue to do this series until God and let God lead the direction he wants us to go to. Amen. But let me read it just in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, um, starting at verse 1. It says, to everything there's a season and, every, and, and, and a time, to every purpose in the heaven, right off the bat, to everything there's a season and, and a time to every purpose in, under the heaven, a time to be born, okay? A time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to moan, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather the stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to win and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. It says, verse 9 said, what profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in this in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning to the end. He says, "I know, I, 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 I know that there is no good in them, but for man to rejoice and to do good in his life." Amen. Everything has everything has a time. Everything in life has a purpose. Everything in his life has a purpose. You know. Um, there's a beginning and there's a, a, a end when it comes to us. When it comes to God, God is, is, is infinity. You know, He's infinite. There's no time restraint on Him, and everything. But because we're in the world and because we're in the flesh, we have the, we have a beginning and we have an end. You know, they have the beginning and then have an end. I talked about briefly on last uh, 
um, on Sunday about that hash mark. What would that hash mark represents that's in between your birthday and your death, and it represents what took place in your life. What took place at the time that you were allotted? What did you do with your time? Okay. Did you waste it? Were you uh, fruitful? <laughs> you know, did you plant seeds? Did you help somebody? Did you, did, were you obedient to the calling on your life? What took place in that brief amount of time? Because when you think about it, it's just a mist. You know, we're just here for a, mi- a minute and we're gone. Amen. And then the other question is, is that one of the things that we talked about, we said that that sometimes we wait, we wait, how do we waste time? Well, we waste time on different things. We waste time worrying about something that we have no control of. You know what I'm saying? We waste time doing those things. We waste time worrying about what other people say about us but instead of worried, being, listening to what God has said that we are. Instead of listening to what God is directing us, instead of listening to make sure that we align with him and not worry about anything else. We waste time. We do. We procrastinate things. We put off things. We do all those things because we all figure that we can, oh, I can do it tomorrow. And we, we fail to realize tomorrow is not promised to not one of, us, one of us. You know, when we look around the world and what's going on in the world today and everything, it's important that we no longer uh, waste time, but we take the time that we have and we realize the value of it, especially the calling that's in our life to go into the hedges and the highways and compare men and women to come in, to go to places and stuff like that. And do the thing that Jesus, uh, us to do. love our enemy as ourselves, love our neighbor as ourselves, love, man, to do those things, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to speak truth into the hearts of men and women, you know, to be sought light and power no matter what. Amen. I want to uh, go ahead and get started I mean, with a, a scripture. One of the things that it, uh, it came to me when I began to do the study of not wasting time, I thought about the uh, the, the uh, 10 virgins, okay? And uh, this is coming out of Matthew 25, and we're going to start at verse 1. I thought about the 10 virgins, and, and in this, Jesus breaks this down into three categories, and we can talk about the virgins, we're going to also, don't know what we can get all this done today, amen, but we're going to try. <laughs> we're going to talk about the virgins. We're going to talk about the talents, amen, and we're going to also, I mean, we're going to also talk about separate the, the sheep and the goat. All of that, when you really begin to peel back the lens, deals with time, the timing of things. God has everything ordained in his own time. God has your healing ordained in the whole time. So, and one of the things that I mentioned on um, Sunday, that sometimes we want to give up before it's time. God, don't, we, and he says to be strong, hold on, don't give up, stand. And after you've done all you can, continue to stand. After you've done all you can, to continue to stand. Help uh, is around you. Your help is around the corner. Daylight is coming. Reaper may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning and everything. But the, the fact that about it, we got to still get to the morning. We still have to stay there and stay alert and stay on our face into the morning. Timing. Time isn't important because we can be out of time of something and totally miss out what God had planned because we stepped out uh, too soon or we stepped out too late. You know, we can waste time with doing um, projects and stuff that God has not even called us to do and everything. You're wasting time. You're singing in the choir and you can't sing. God ain't tell you to sing, but you're singing in the choir. You're wasting time. He called you to minister. You know, maybe he called you to be an intercessor or whatever and stuff. So but now you should have found that scripture, Matthew 25. Amen. But this is what it says. It says, Amen. It says, Then said the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. In other words, there was these virgins was getting ready, pre- prepared, uh, amen, to get married. They were getting ready to be prepared, amen, to connect with them. And the thing I like about that first this first scripture right here, verse one, and that they all were virgins. And that and they all were lamps. And they all went forth. <laughs> okay? They all were virgins, you know? In other words, they had never been with any other man or anything else. So they were, had set themselves aside just for the bridegroom. Just for the bridegroom. When you think about virgin, you mean you think about purity. You think about cleanness. You think about never having been with a man. You think about all those things that come into play, you know? 
They all were virgins, all ten were virgins. They all had lambs, and they all was obedient enough to go forth and meet the bridegroom. That means they had to be some preparations in place for them to go forth and meet the bridegrooms. Okay? And the Bible says in verse 2, says, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. You know, it says five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. In other words, it's 50-50 here. Five wise, five foolish. You know? But then it goes on to, t- to explain what separated the wise from the foolish. Okay? What separated the wise from the foolish? And what separated us, verse 3 says, that they, were, they that were foolish took their lamps. Remember, they all had lamps. And, and took no oil with them. It said, and they took no oil with them. They had the lamps. Maybe they had oil in the lamps, but they didn't take any extra oil. But it says, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. In other words, the wise took oils in their jars. I think New King James Version called them jars. But the wise took oil in their vessels with them. Another, they had backup. <laughs> they not only had oil in their lamp, but they had backup. And this is why the Bible here in verse 16, verses 3 and 4 says so much because they call the ones that didn't take no oil foolish and the ones that did wise. Then the thing about it, they, I, I, when I look at those that was foolish, I had, they had to understand that they needed some extra oil. No doubt, they, no doubt they probably even, and I'm speculating them, going on with my own thinking, but they probably even thought, looked at the wise and I saw them take the oil, <laughs> extra oil. So they knew they had extra oil. The question that I would like to ask, did you think that they would have enough right then um, to, to, for them to use and for you to be able to use too? They didn't take the time, y'all, to go and finish getting what was needed. They wasted time. They wasted time, I don't know, maybe talking or maybe being excited or maybe doing other things or maybe dealing with their family or whatever and stuff like that. But they wasted time not being, not going to the place and making sure that the oil, they had oil with them. They had taken um, the vessels or they had taken the extra jars of oil with them just in case. You know, they didn't take any precautions. They wasn't wise. They wasn't thinking in advance. They didn't think ahead, you know, and everything. I don't think that they forgot. I think they knew. They just decided, ah, we got enough. Ah, we got enough. We'll be okay. There's no need and everything. You want to take it, you go ahead and take it. But I don't think we're going to need all that. I want, in other words, I don't want to take everything I'm supposed to take. I want to take, be very, you know, leave some things off that I, I know I need, but I don't feel like I need it. So I think I'm going to be okay. You know, and we do that even today, that, that God has given us everything at our disposal. He's given us everything we need. But what good is having the, 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 the shield of faith if I don't grab it and use it or take it with me when I go into battle? What good is me having a helmet of salvation if I don't put it on my head? You know, what we're going to be having the breastplate of righteousness, of the sandals of peace? What could be having the sword, which is the word of God? What could be having those things if I don't put it to use or bring it into the battle or if I leave anything out and stuff like that? I'm missing out. You know, so truly those things were provided for them and everything. And the Bible doesn't hear say anything much about it and stuff. And I'm, and I'm just curious. It didn't say that they had to pay for the oil and thing like that at that time, you know. But he just decided that um, they were they, they were going to take no extra oil with them. They were going to take in the vessels, okay. And then um, Red Friday goes into a whole new category. It says while the bri- the bridegroom tarried, tarried. And they all they all slumbered and slept. And when I begin to again research that just that scripture right there, and again we're talking about that. In other words, the the, the, the bridegroom took longer than what he was supposed to. Okay, and this is what happened when <laughs> this is what happens when you're unprepared here. The bridegroom took longer than what they were he was supposed to. So they probably assumed that the bridegroom was going to be on time. Everything's going to so there was no need to take the oil. They didn't want an extra piece of uh, something, um, something for them to carry, all these things. So they say, oh, no, we'll be okay. He'll be on time. But the Bible said the bridegroom tarried. And while the bridegroom tarried, what did they do? <laughs> they all slumbered and slept. All 10 went to sleep. 
They're always knocked out. They're always sleeping and everything like that. But still, the concept of what was going on, not understand, it was still dealing with time because even though the bridegroom tarried, even though he missed the time, you know, that he was supposed to come, he was still yet coming, okay? He was coming. And everything, even though he tarried, even though it, he, he, it took a while for him to get to the place that he's supposed to meet them in, he still was coming and everything. So they were at, they were at rest and they were at peace and everything. And again, the fact about it, they were all virgins and they were all clean. And, and in our case, those that are Christian know that we, they, they all was going to the, maybe they all going to the same church and everything. They all was, they was, you know, they were ready. They were ready. There was there was an expectation that was taking place with the ten virgins, where they knew that they was going to get married. There was an expectation that they already had made plans. Everything was in step. Everything was in order. Everything is in time for them to get married. Verse uh, Matthew twenty five six says, and at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom, bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. It says, at midnight, there was a cry made, you know, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Now, think about that for a second. They are in slumber, they are sleeping, <laughs> they are resting there in peace. The wise guy, the backup player, the foolish does not. And all of a sudden, you hear a cry being made. You got some other words, when I talk about cry, I talk about speaking with the Bible. Behold, the bridegroom coming. Go ye out to meet him. In other words, it wake them up out of their slumber and their, and their sleep. And it made them get themselves together. And this is where we go on from here. Verse 7 says, then all, those, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Every last all ten roses trimmed their lamps. They got up because it was time and the cry, time for them to get up and go meet the bridegroom. They got up and they couldn't wait. The, the time was no longer wasted because the bridegroom was waiting for them. They got up and the time and the opportunity they had to make sure, the, talking about the foolish, that they had everything they knew was wasted. They couldn't get it back. They can't go back in time to say, okay, let me make make this well, okay? It says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, listen, hear this right here. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Wait a minute, right there. They all arose, all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. They took the time to make sure that the flame won't go out and everything, but they trimmed the lamp. But the foolish version, their oil ran out. The lamp went out. And they were, they were in an awkward place with no backup plan and no or nowhere except for the, the five wires they had it. Their timing was out. They 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 was in a, a place because it was too late to go really go and get anything else. The bridegroom was coming, you know, and they was they had a specific time to meet him, and they couldn't because their oil was out because the lamp was out because the lamp was out. This is then they all. Those birds that arose and trimmed their lamps. Verse 8 says, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Give us of your oil. Share. Help a brother out. Help a, help a sister out. Our lamps are going out. And we, you know, and the thing I like about, uh, you know, oh man, I just thought about this. The thing I like about this is that they knew that they would leave the lamps. Amen. Because they knew that it would be late when they met the bridegroom. They didn't know the bridegroom would tarry. They didn't know the bridegroom would take it longer than what he what he said it would be and stuff like that. But they knew that they knew that needed the lamps. And the whole purpose of the lamps and everything it was to do what? To give light, y'all. To give light so they'd be able to see where they're going. To give light so that the bridegroom be able to see them. You know, the bridegroom was going to be able to see them when they met them in that, in that place. There was a place that they had to go to get to, and each one of them needed their own light. Each one of them needed their own lamp. But there was a responsibility that they had for themselves to make sure that they had enough oil for the light. 
It says, verse 8 says, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, put our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, Not so. In other words, it ain't happening. <laughs> Lest there be not enough for us and you. You know, we're not willing to take that risk that I, we give you some of our oil for your lamp, and then our, <laughs> our lamp go out too. You know, we're not willing to take that risk. You was willing to take the risk when you didn't make sure that you have enough oil. Then you want us to do so also with you. No, no. He said, the Bible says, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But this is what they tell them to go. They tell them to go. He said, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now, again, keep in mind that it's night. Okay. This is not during the day. And most shops are closed <laughs> during that time, okay? Okay, most shops are, are closed at that time, you know? And we already know that it's past midnight, okay? Because in verse 6, it says, at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom coming. So we know it's past, past midnight. So it's when, during one of the watches uh, of the night and everything, and it's dark and everything, <laughs> you know, it's dark and everything, and stuff probably didn't even begin to open up yet, you know? But the wise was like, no, we, no, no, no. We can't give you our orders. Again, we're talking about timing. We're talking about time. You know, they had wasted time and didn't do those things necessary that they should have did and that they had did. Then we weren't talking about five foolish and five wise. We were talking about five, ten, ten wise. Amen. But it says, the wise answer said, not so lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And then the Bible, verse 10 says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. While they went to buy, doesn't say how long it took for them. Doesn't say they doesn't say they had to wait till, till the stores open up or uh, uh, the market open up. Doesn't say anything. But it said while they went, while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came. While they had to take the time that they had to waste the time and go do something that they should have done, the bridegroom came. It says, and they that were ready went in with them to the marriage, and the door was shut. Those that were ready, those five that was ready, you know, went in with them, and they shut the door. They said, hey, if they're not here, that means they wasn't ready. That means either they changed their mind. We can't wait. You know, the bridegroom decided, he's like, we're going to move forward with this, you know? And that same principle applied for us. There's a, a period of time, a time, y'all, that when Jesus comes, that the door is going to be shut and it's going to be too late for us to say that we're sorry. It's going to be too late for us to go and get that which we needed that we should have had because it was right there for us in a way. It was at our disposal right there because when God gives us something, he gives us more than we need. He gives us everything. It's like a smorgasbord of stuff that's right there, but we got to go get it. We have to get it. We have to request it and we got to do it. In the, in the proper time. Everything has a time and a season. It says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with them to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other version, so on, Lord, Lord, open to us. I said, afterward, later on, you know, that some, some times have, have pa- passed. Sometimes it had went through and everything. No, 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 maybe an hour, 15, even two minutes. It was too long. Just some, some time had already passed. And it says, after they came into the other virgins, after the other virgins came, it said, Lord, Lord, open to us. Now they got they, what they needed. They finally, I can I imagine they got the extra oil they needed. But the truth of the matter, it was too late. And the truth of the matter, they didn't really need it anymore because the door was already shut. They didn't even need it anymore and everything because the the, the, the bridegroom right here, things had already taken, begin to take place inside the, the shut doors. Inside the shut doors. But he asked, the, verse 12 says, but he asked and said, really I say unto you, I know you not. Wow. He said, I, 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 I know you not. I don't know you. 
I don't know who you are. All I know that I, your, your timing is off and you're knocking on a door that I've shut and everything. And I wanted you to, to come in and be with the others, but you missed the opportunity. I gave you time. I gave you everything you needed and stuff. I sent instructions. I did all the things that I could do, but you decided not to go and do what it was necessary to make sure that you had enough for the journey. You decided that, oh, that, that I, you took me for granted. I believe they, they took the bridegroom for granted and they said, well, oh, he's going to be on time or he's not going to be late or he's going to do this or he's going to do that. But he said, he said, I don't know you. He said, really, truly, in other words, really or truly, you know, honestly, honestly, I don't know who you are. I expected 10, but I got five, and now I got to be, I'm, I'm dealing with the five. I can't deal with you because you're late in everything. You're knocking on the door. Talking about let you in. It is us. I don't, I don't know you. Verse 13 says, so it says, watch therefore, for you know, you know, he now, you know, neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man coming. You don't know the day. You don't know the timing, y'all. You don't know the timing, and if you don't know the timing, that means you can't afford to waste any time. You can't afford, we can't, we, 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 we can't afford to continue to do things as business as usual in the body of Christ. We can't afford to go, go through the motions of just having a church, but not having a relationship with Jesus Christ. We just can't afford to do that. We cannot afford not to be obedient to the things that God has given us. We can't afford it. Time is running out. We can't afford to wait any more time now from a day, not a second, one minute, you know, one hour. We can't afford to waste any more time. We, as you look and you see the things that are going around in life, you see the hand that is writing on the wall. You see men dying left and right. You see the men become more lovers of the own. All kinds of atrocities and abominations taking place in the earth. Okay, you see all kinds of wickedness of, of being laws being placed and stuff. You see people being persecuted because of the not only because of the color in their skin, but because they believe in Jesus Christ. You see people being persecuted, persecuted and shut out because they don't have enough money in the bank. And you see all these things taking place. Time is running out. We can't waste any more time. We can't. It is time for us to 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 understand where we are. It is time for us to understand where we are and who we are and stuff like that. And go do those things that God has done. And not, talk, not getting up, caught up in legalism and, you know, and everything because the Bible says faith without works is dead and everything. But not getting caught up in all of that, but being obedient to the call, to the calling that's in your life. Being obedient to whatever that Jesus wants you to do, you know. And not have been afraid. It's time for us to, you know, listen, it's, it's way past time to put, us to put away our fears, or these different emotions and stuff that block us and try to hinder us from going forward. It's time. We can't do it anymore. It's time. I'm talking to myself. It's time to write that book. It's time to put it on paper or let God do it better yet. And you just be the, the one of the type or whatever. It's, uh, it's time. It's time to start that ministry or that church and everything, whatever it may be. I mean, most of us go like this, like, like <laughs> well, there's a church on every corner, but they're not the church that, that God has called for you. It's time for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's time. You know, you've been straggling the fence uh, I mean, for years or for days and months and stuff, and God's been constantly tugging at your heart. He's been constantly tugging at you. He's been sending people your way to minister to you, to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's been, he been um, dropping songs of his love for you in your, in your spirit and everything, so that it would draw you. And he, it's time. It's time. He's doing all of the. He's pruning you. He's grooming you. And then, you know, you often hear him hear me say he's cutting away dead things in your life and around your life. He's digging around you because he's trying to get you to grow properly so that you will bear fruit. He's doing all those things and stuff. But he's doing it because he loves you, but he's doing it for his name's sake. He's doing it because he wants to use you the way that he has designed you to be used. He's doing it. 
so that he would get the glory. It's time. You know, we cannot afford to waste any more time. This has been a burning um, a message in me for the last couple of days, ever since Saturday, I think, or maybe Friday and stuff about that. And I'm talking to myself because I'm one of the greatest procrastinators there is. You know, I will wait on something that I know that God told me to do and stuff like that because I want to make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. And I want to make sure that, that it, it makes it in its logical, correct and everything like that. But And that's a lack of trust on my part. But guess what? I'm talking about me, but some of you are probably in the same situation. He's asking us today to trust him without a shadow of a doubt. He's asking us today to believe in him and to trust him and to hold on to him and to understand and everything that he has given us a, a period of grace and everything to find out who he is, to find out who he, what he's about. He has given us a period of grace to seek after things of him. And I'm worried about the riches and the cares of this world because if we seek God, all the other things will be added to it. If we seek him, they will be like byproducts of it. It's a, if we seek him, timing, it's time. It's time for us to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to minister to others and everything. And I'm talking to the Christians right now, and it's time for us to do those things, y'all. It's time for us to intercede day and night, night and day, you know. We're going to talk um, probably next week or the next couple of weeks about um, the 12 hours a day and the 12 hours a night that Jesus was talking about. Um, um, when he was talking about going to, to uh, going to a particular place and everything, but we will talk about that timing. You know, everything Jesus did was time. He knew <laughs> certain things had to take place at a time. He, him and the Father was in an agreement, and you and I should be in agreement with the Holy Spirit. You know, so when they tried to kill him, he realized it wasn't his time to die. When they tried to make him king, he, he realized it wasn't his time and everything like that. See, he was a good example of managing um, time, but not the time that we think, the time that God has ordained. So, Because he knew the will of the Father. He knew the heart of the Father and everything because he and the Father was one. Because him and, the, and because he and the Father was one, he was able to go through time and be obedient to the things of God. But the thing about it, he did it for, with him and the Father, but the same principle applies for us to have that kind of relationship that we can go through the time periods, the intervals of time and stuff, and be obedient to the Father because we know when the, when the Father is leading us or guiding us is pushing us and stretching us and teaching us and discipling us and, 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 even, <laughs> and even chastising us. We know and, everything, and we listen to him you know, and everything. So when the Holy Spirit speaks, we know, okay, it's time. We know that it's time. <sighs> listen, y'all, I, I, I can't go any further because I don't want to start the other part of this and I don't want to run out of time. Okay, so we're going to come back on probably on Sunday, you know, if not on Friday, we'll see what the Lord says, and we're going to talk about this some more. We're going to stay in Matthew 25 for a little bit, and we're going to talk about Matthew 25. We're going to talk about some other scriptures. I didn't even get to the scriptures I wanted to um, read right off the bat. There's quite a few, man, but God is saying to all of us, y'all, that it's time. That no more, we can no longer afford to waste any more time. That Jesus is soon to come. And I know that people say, well, they've been saying that for 2,000 years. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And people have, have gotten um, uh, gotten lackadaisical lax in their approach up to church. And they say, well, I've been hearing that for years, and he ain't come back yet. But I go to church this Sunday. I miss church next Sunday. I go and do what I want to do. What's right in my own side this, that's, that, this, that, because I always got time to, re, to repent and always got time I'm telling you that we're running out of time here the time is not on our side we're running out of time and everything because we don't never know the hour or the day it says that in the scriptures that, that the son of God will come back for his own. we don't know the time of the day that we would take our last breath we don't know we don't know amen 
bless you. Father God, we thank you for this message today. We pray that it be a blessing to the people of God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they will hear the word that you have given them, that we, God, we hear the word, that we will press forward toward the mark of the higher calling in you, Jesus, that we will not turn to the left or the right, but stay focused on you, God. We thank you in advance, God, for those that will be saved and delivered, God, by the message, God, not by the messenger, but by the message and by the one that gave the message, which is you, Jesus. We thank you in advance, God, for those that will be encouraged by the, the, the one that gave the message, which is you, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your work being done. Lord Jesus, we know that you are still doing miracles. You know that you are still saving. We know that you are still doing healing. You know that we know that you're doing still doing the work of your hand, God. But even though the enemy might rage and even though the enemy might do all kinds of stuff in the land, you are still lost and in control in control. You are in control of everything. In fact, the enemy can't do anything, God, unless you allow it. So we thank you in advance. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Again, everyone, don't forget, the Bold and the Beautiful will take place on this Saturday at 10 a.m. Amen. We're excited about that. We also have uh, um, adoration I think takes place on that on Monday, this coming Monday, Amen, with Evangelist Lewis McElwain, Amen. And of course you know we got Friday Night Joy and Bread of Life and uh, Reverend Pat is back on the air. I mean Amen. So she's doing live broadcast on um um Thursday with declaring the finished work of Reverend Pat Randall. And on tomorrow on Wednesday of course we got um um I'm sorry, oh uh, tomorrow on Wednesday, Amen. We got uh, a Midday Glory Prayer with, with uh, Reverend Gwen Dixon this Wednesday, tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Amen. Midday Glory Prayer. Okay. The telephone number is 641-715-3580. That's his goal. is 732-499. And of course, don't forget to challenge the change with Pastor Paul Morgan. That's tomorrow at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Amen. Challenge the change. He's an awesome teacher and um, man of God. And Life Plan is every first Monday of the month at 7 p.m. And um, uh, what did I forget? Um, the Alabaster bus is every fourth Saturday at 7 p.m. So those are our annou- announcements. Listen, this is a we are a 501c3 company. We would love to have you donate to us and help this community. And we are doing some great and positive things. God has blessed us to be have our listener base in different countries all around the world. And we bless God for that. But you can donate to this to this ministry, Amen. Or any all the ministers that fall on us. Amen. If, if if you so choose, if you go to onechristianspeak dot com and click on the donate now button, and I think there may be a link on our Facebook page at One Christian Speak also. So y'all be blessed. Know that I love you. You know. And again, the message today: don't waste time. We want to thank Minister Van for allowing me this opportunity to take up more her, her broadcast. This is still her broadcast. She's not going anywhere. Amen. She's just taking some time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So she should be back uh, soon. And uh, we pray that you, this message has been a blessing to you. Please share this broadcast by all means. Please share. God bless you and know that I love you. Amen. God bless you. Amen.